Hey everyone, welcome to Sharon's for Horror and Supreme. Today I'm talking about The Rage Carry 2. This movie attempts to follow in the footsteps of Brian De Palma's classic carry, but fails miserably. Like, it falls so painfully short in the execution that it's just sad. And this lackluster sequel really is just filled with cliché and a misguided attempt to recapture the magic of the original. It really is just terrible. It misses the mark on both narrative and emotional front. And this movie is just a massive disappointment, in my opinion. So, let's get into my review of The Rage Carry 2. That right. <laughs> So the film centers around Rachel Lang, played by Emery, Emily Bergel. What, what, okay, just because this movie is bad, I'm going to make fun of her name. And what kind of name is that? What's that last name? Bergel. Emily Bagel. She eats. I bet she likes bagel. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I can just tell that she tried something with this role. But <laughs> I don't know what she was doing. She looked like she was like the face that she makes in this movie looks like she's mid fart and mid throwing up. Try and envision that in your mind. That is what her face looks like in this movie. And she's just a high school student outcast with telekinetic powers. Any bells ringing anyone? Does, does this sound familiar? Because this is just the plot of Carry One again. And you know when her best friend commits suicide because I can't say that word in this video. After being exploited by a group of popular jocks. Sounding familiar, anyone? Rachel discovers the dark truth behind their actions as she seeks revenge. And her telekinetic abilities manifest in a series of increasingly destructive and stupidly vengeful acts. Now, what I'm going to say is, I liked some of this movie. I found some of it very funny. But that's because I'm sad. And I don't have a life. I sit here watching movies all day. It's not even a lie at this point. Like the film is just very bad. It's like what's a movie? It's like Winnie the Pooh on Honey, in my opinion. It's so bad that I can enjoy some parts of it. Like, but at least that movie was funny. Like this movie is just this movie is just subpar garbage, and it really just fails to capture the essence and depth of Stephen King's original character's narrative, it sort of just fails miserably. And Emily's portrayal of Rachel, I'm not going to bother trying to say her name again. It's too difficult for my lackluster dialect. But um, she really does lack the emotional depth and just anything interesting that Sissy Spacek brought to the role. And they attempt to replicate the bullied, outcast-turned-adventure kind of character. But that feels really tired and uninspired in this movie. Like, if you're gonna do that, do a Toxic Avenger movie. Those are at least interesting. This is just sad. And we tend to connect the narrative events to the first film through the inclusion of Sue. It just feels really forced, if you know what I mean. And it just kind of just is very boring. It kind of struggles to establish its own identity and relies heavily on references and callbacks to the original. It's very much American Psycho 2, if you know what I mean. It's a sequel that has basically nothing to do with the original. Hell, I may just make a video talking about both those movies shoved together. I've done a review of American Psycho 2, which is going to be in the thing in the corner up here. But... I may as well do the first one and the second one again, to be honest. It's been a while since I last watched those movies. But the supporting characters in this movie are very forgettable. With the jock antagonist, they really just embody the generic, exaggerated stereotypes of just random bullies. Like, they play football. They're douchebags. They have shaved heads. Are we seeing anything similar to the bully in every American movie from the 90s? Anyone. But, you know, it's just it's just very subpar, this movie. And the attempt at social commentary in high school culture and bullying 
really lacks any subtlety. It results in a very heavy-handed and ineffective message. Like, you have a very, very serious message in this movie, which they fail at so badly that <laughs> I don't know where they were going. And the visual effects, particularly during the telekinetic sequences, appear so dated. Like, the original De Palma movie brought Carrie to life in just a unforgettable experience. Whereas this movie is the most forgettable and uninspiring visual experience you've ever seen. Besides maybe She-Hulk. But, you know... Ultimately, in my opinion, though, The Rage Carry 2 is such a lackluster sequel, and it's very uninspiring. It attempts to just cash in the success of the original carry, with its underdeveloped characters and just really formulaic plot, and the extremely dated visual. The film fails to recapture the magic and emotional resonance of its predecessor, and ultimately, it comes across as just an unforgettable sequel. And by unforgettable, I meant forgettable. I don't know why I can't read my own scripts all of a sudden, but it's really just a struggle to justify its existence with the iconic legacy of Carrie. Well, that's just my opinions on the Rage Carrie too. Let me know your opinions in the comments below. If I said Carrie wrong, let me know. I'm I'm quite an idiot. Um, but you know, till next time. I like bagels. Uh -huh.